On Juba's dusty streets, giant posters celebrate the third anniversary of South Sudan's independence. But many people in the world's newest country are in no mood to cheer. In nearby Tom Ping camp, some 15,000 internally displaced people live in makeshift tents, fetching water from tanker trucks and wading through mud. They are just a fraction of the one and a half million people displaced by the civil war that erupted here in December. Before the conflict, Abraham Tatmayak was studying for a degree in biology. Now, his dreams are dashed, and his daily life is just about survival. The overcrowding is, is, is one, one, one condition that we are facing now. And then another, another condition, the way of living. Uh, we, are not, we, we, are not, we are not feeling safe. There are so many diseases because we are, like, we are, we are, we are living under, under the ground, and there is the rain. Thousands of people have been killed in the conflict between South Sudan's first president, Salva Kiir, and his former vice president, now turned rebel leader, Rak Mishar. Human rights groups say that both sides have committed widespread atrocities, and the country is now at the top of the Fragile States Index. The United Nations is building several new sites to house the almost 100,000 displaced civilians seeking shelter on their bases. And to make matters much worse, aid agencies warn of imminent famine if they don't receive massive funding for food aid. The Red Cross has begun its first airdrops from nearly two decades, hoping to reach hundreds of thousands of starving people. There are alarming signs, signs there. Uh, there is malnutrition, especially amongst the kids in, uh, in sensitive areas. So if that uh, level of uh, assistance cannot be maintained and increased in the next month, it is well likely that the food insecurity will become rather dramatic. Peace talks in Ethiopia have so far failed to bridge the gap or implement a lasting ceasefire. The conflict, which started as a political row between Kier and his former deputy, has taken on a brutal ethnic dimension, with Mashar's Noor tribe pitted against the Dinka community that is loosely tied to Kier. It's a far cry from the euphoria of three years ago, when both men pledged to build a strong, united and prosperous nation after a decades-long fight for independence from Sudan. It was uh, powerful. People sense, uh, sense, you know, had a sense of uh, you know, having won uh, the war that they fought for many years. So contrast that with what happened on the 15th of December, uh, where the sense of togetherness, the sense of being victorious, the sense of living peacefully uh, without fear uh, in your own country, that, that was changed drastically. From joy and hope to desperation, and now possibly starvation, South Sudan's promising future is long gone, and many are hoping its leaders will at last step back from the brink of catastrophe.